Hey everyone, welcome back to my channel where I talk about all things tech and finance. And in this video, I'm going to be talking about momentum trading signals and strategies. And most of these strategies are really well known, but I just, you know, just accumulated all these strategies in one notebook to, you know, just demonstrate what they are and how they operate in the back end. Major disclaimer over here, this is obviously not financial advice. And if you do some of these strategies right out of the gate, you will probably be losing a lot of money. So just you know, take that into consideration when you're looking at this particular, I guess, notebook that I have generated right here. And oftentimes, momentum by itself is not really such a great indicator. You're going to have to have other indicators as well, or you would typically use other indicators in addition to momentum to, you know, solidify your very own strategy when you are, you know, just trading on the financial markets. Okay, so the basic idea behind momentum is that you could be buying at a high price, and sell even higher. That's pretty much all it is. You can be playing off of a trend, and hopefully that's an upward trend because that's pretty much what momentum is based on, upward trends. Um, and you could be trying to get into a position where you think the position is gonna be going up really, really fast, and that's where you can have a really quick turnaround so you can sell your position afterward. And it doesn't really have to be like on a minute to minute or second to second basis. That's definitely more in the high frequency trading realm. You can do this more on a day to day basis or even week to week, but then um, hopefully your momentum signals are you know, that long in terms of the time horizon. Uh, but yeah, that's pretty much what momentum is. In my opinion, it's not very that scientific, honestly. Um, but you know, we're gonna be breaking down a few uh, indicators where we have it right here listed. And we're gonna be just be breaking them down and what it's gonna be doing in, in the back end. So also similarly, if we have over here, um, make sure you check out the pairs trading algorithm. It's very interesting. The link is in this particular notebook as well as the link in the description down below. If you're interested in the, you know, the trading aspects uh, with the financial engineering portions. But yeah, let's go ahead and get some data. Uh, this is just a customized function that I just so happened to create. I just did some inputs right here for November 13th, pretty much one year of data. And I'm getting the adjusted closing prices for, as you can see, GameStop, AMC, and Bed Bath & Beyond. Um, you might already be aware of this, but you know, right now these are... Uh, these were the meme stocks of the year already. So once we have our data for our adjusted closing, let's take a look at what these meme stocks actually look like. Uh, and this is just the adjusting close. Let's minimize this so you can actually see it and see the graph. So we have our GameStop, AMC, and Bed Bath & Beyond. And as we see here, roughly in the fourth month of 2022, uh, there was a second trend on, you know, perhaps if you were trading on momentum, you could perhaps maybe capitalize on that second trend if you look at it from that point of view. And it seems like if you're looking at Bed Bath & Beyond, there's a different trend that was occurring right here. Uh, but there's essentially these huge spikes. And uh, what momentum traders would typically do is that they try to capitalize on these spikes, you know, perhaps buying you know, somewhere around here and then selling somewhere around here uh, to capitalize on that spread. So let's go ahead and take a look at right here, rate of change probably the most basic of all the momentum trading, uh, I guess, strategies. And for this particular rate of, rate of change, I've went ahead and calculated the percentage change um, from a day-to-day -day perspective. If there's a huge uh, positive percentage change from a day-to-day, -day, then you know that there's a huge trend or an indicator that you know maybe you can perhaps capitalize on. And just went ahead, and went ahead and printed out the mean. So the reason why I um, am pointing out those two values is that I'm going to be using these values to calculate a z-score. Uh, and these are going to be the representation of the z-score values from a day-to-day. -day. And the reason why I was doing this is to you know, maybe pro provide some form of a gauge on how rare a particular event would be in this given time horizon and you know using that information if a specific percentage change is as outside of like let's say like a first band maybe it might be your indicator to buy in and then sell you know right after you know it really just depends on what your risk appetite would be if it's outside the second band maybe trade on that who knows but you know i'm just providing the tools for you to explore on this particular avenue so that is essentially the rate of change 
um, and take a look at the next one, where essentially it's going to be a very similar part where we are just going to be trading on the difference of the stock prices from the day to day. So instead of do, using a percentage change, we're going to be just subtracting the prices from each other. So similar concepts. Um, and if we were to run this, let's see what's data. That's, that's our data. And then we calculate, let's say, the difference, you know, uh, using a 10 day threshold. We calculate the final price. We're essentially we're going to be using, you know, for the first day to the 10th day, subtract those two values. And then that'll be the resulting value for that 10th day. Um, and then let's go ahead and plot that. And this can provide you some additional indicators on what that may look like if it's like really really positive you know around the fourth month then you know perhaps that may be your other indicator to trade on and if we see here it was like the fourth month roughly and the eighth ish month um and if we look all the way up here you know it's roughly the same i guess although the eighth month is not the same right there but you know roughly the fourth month um you know, they have the same indicators right there if you were to use the subtraction method or if you're to just go ahead and use the percentage change method. Okay, great. So let's just look at one particular stock. And in this case, I just went ahead and used the GameStop example. And if we were to use the subtraction symbols as we did over here um, from a 10 day point of view, the gist is right here, like anything above the zero line could be a positive indicator for momentum. And anything that's underneath the line, uh, the zero line of the subtraction would be a negative indicator, so bearish momentum. So that's the basic idea behind using the subtraction momentum uh, strategy here. And the next strategy is the stochastic oscillator strategy. So this is a momentum indicator that compares closing prices of security to its historical prices in a given period of time. Uh, via this particular strategy, this generates overbought and oversold indicators for you to do whatever you deem fit. So there are two main components within the stochastic oscillator strategy. We have a percent K, also colloquially known as the fast stochastic indicator. And we have percent D, which is the slow stochastic indicator. So let's begin with percent K. Uh, this just represents a current price trend in relation to the asset's recent price range. And percent D is essentially the moving average of a three period window of the percent K. This provides a longer term horizon on like, you know, what's happening uh, using that specific average. And so to calculate percent K, we have this equation right here. And within a trading window uh, denoted as X, it is more or less referred to like 14 trading days. Um, that's the most common uh, time horizon that folks use. You can, of course, change that uh, to whatever you deem fit. But 14 is the rule of thumb here. So the equation is, you know, yeah, most recent closing price within that trading window of 14 days. Subtract that from the lowest traded price of the X previous sessions. Divide all of that by the highest price of the X previous sessions. Subtract that by lowest traded price of X previous sessions. Multiply that by 100. And that is your fast stochastic indicator. For percent D, again, moving average of your percent K, and it's usually on a three period uh, rolling window. So let's go ahead and load in our packages, what we have here, and our data that we'll be using for this particular scenario. It's gonna be Apple stock, pretty much just got it straight from Yahoo Finance, and we have high, low, open, close, volume, and adjusted close. So using the equation right here and our various, um, I guess, like variables within here, we're going to be calculating our percent K and our percent D, which I conveniently got from this particular link over here, if you want to check them out. Uh, but yeah, pretty much all the calculations were already calculated. We have the, the maximum uh, adjusted closing value. We have, well, not just the high value, I should say. High value, low value within that 14 period window, calculate percent K and D. And then I just went ahead and plotted the adjusted close. And then we have these two lines, 20 and 80, which we see right here. Those are just actually um, indicators on whether or not this particular equity is oversold if it's below 20 or overbought if it's 80, meaning that you should probably um, 
you know, perhaps sell if it's overbought and buy if it's oversold. Uh, but, you know, it doesn't always work, of course, as we can see on the graphs above 80 and above 20. So let's look at this graph. Um, the blue line and the orange line are percent %K and percent %D respectively. And the green line is the adjusted closing price. Now do note um, that this actually has two Y axes. We have the indicator values from zero to 100 on the left, say, uh, left hand side and 130 to 180, which is our adjusted closing value for our particular equity. So just bear that in mind when looking at these values. And so another, I guess, like tidbit when you're looking at signals is that if percent %K is greater than percent %D, then that is a buy signal. And if percent %K is less than percent %D, of course, that will be a sell signal. If they're roughly equal, then that's pretty much no signal at all. All right, so another really popular momentum indicator strategy is utilizing the relative strength index. It's a momentum indicator used in popular technical analysis that details overvalue or undervalued conditions in the price of a security. So the equation itself is you know, relatively straightforward. Um, and you know, so 100 subtracts 100 over one plus the average gain and average loss. Uh, within the RSI now, and this is within a specific window and also I'm just using 14 trading days as well and yeah that's pretty much your relative strength index relatively quite simple I'm using pandas underscore TA very popular and a robust uh, package library to use uh, for all of that jazz within here and as we see, I just appended RSI to the original data set up above for Apple. Uh, but our RSI is calculated right there. And yeah, that's pretty much that. And it just uses this equation right here. And let's go ahead and plot what that looks like for an RSI value. And so I already wrote up here, if your RSI value is greater than 70, then it's overbought, which means it's perhaps an indicator to sell. And if your RSI value is less than 30, then that means it's oversold, which may be an indicator that is when you should perhaps buy. And yep, yeah, that's pretty much your RSI. All right, so last but certainly not least, moving average convergence divergence or MACD is probably the most popular technical tool to use when to calculate signals and to determine whether or not it's a good entry point to get into the market and to identify momentum in general. It's widely used throughout the entire trading market from what I've seen and what I've read and is a really robust tool compared to some of the other tools that I have shown uh, in this video. So the entire back end of MACD is powered by EMAs or exponential moving averages. You can think of this particular average equation as a weighted uh, average for the more recently appeared data observations compared to the lesser and more old, older um, observations as seen in your typical time series plots. So the more recent observations are more heavily weighted. Uh, and I included the equation on what EMAs are. You can take a look into that. I also include some additional resources if you're not familiar and want to know more about exponential moving averages. So within the MACD strategy, there are three main components that you want to be aware of. Uh, so to calculate the MACD line, you're going to have the long-term EMA, subtract that by the short-term EMA. So Typically, the values for your time horizon for your long-term uh, period is 26, and your short-term period is 12. This is just general knowledge on you know, what type of I guess, time horizons you would want to use. Um, and of course, you can change it. And so for the signal line, uh, this is a nine-period EMA of your MACD line, uh, and just get those values from the MACD line. And now we also have the histogram line, and that's just the subtraction between the MACD line and the signal line, as we see here. All right, so we'll be finding out real quick as to why we'll be using these components. And so let's look at here. So within the stock stats package, uh, it pretty much has all, all the separate components that we will want. So uh, I linked the GitHub repository uh, within here. 
uh, Jealous stock stats, and it has a host of all these different uh, indicators that you can use. It's already calculated as a wrapper, and I'll be going into more detail on that. So if we look at you know MACD for instance, it already has everything located here, and I already provided you the equation on how these values are already calculated. So you can go ahead and check out that website or that GitHub repository if you would like. Now let's go ahead and load in that library, load in the ticker symbols. We'll be using GME and uh, this is just a data frame uh, that I've outputted over here. And yeah, we're just roughly uh, a year's worth of data. And this is straight from Yahoo Finance. So one thing that you would need in order to actually use this tool is that you're gonna need a high, low, or it's right here. It needs to contain features such as date, close, high, low, volume, um, in order to actually run through the wrapper since it and behind the scenes it calculates all those individual uh, I guess like values that you may want to use so let's go ahead and load that um, and notice that we don't see anything because it's behind the scenes so if we do a type on GME it says stock data frame now and previously actually if I run this part first and get another cell and then a type on ticker it's a pandas core data frame but of course if we add that wrapper it is now a stock stock um, data frame so it has all those separate individual components that you may want to use for your technical analysis and these are the three values on calculating the MACD, the signal lines, and the histogram lines. They're already all previously calculated. And of course, for convenience, I already included the general equation on what to use from there. So uh, for MACD is the difference between those two exponential moving averages, as I mentioned earlier. But if you do not want to use a 26 period EMA and a 12 period EMA for the long and short term signals, or for the line periods, for the periods of time, you can go ahead and change that however you see fit. Uh, but by default, it's 20, 26, 12, and 9 for each one of these values. So great. So we have our tools. We have our signal line. We have our MACD. And we have our histogram line. Um, using this really nifty function from this particular article, plotting of MACD. Let's go ahead and run through that. And it's going to be generating a really nice plot where it has all those signals that we would want to use as we see here. So I just plugged in the adjusted closing price, which we see here. This is our price chart. We have our MACD value, we have our signal line, and we have our histogram line. So probably the most important piece is this aspect right here. And this is representative of our signals. So as I mentioned earlier, uh, the MACD line or yeah, the MACD in general is providing an indicator on when to actually get into the market perhaps. So if the MACD line as denoted as this gray line right here, if it's greater than the signal line, which is the light blue, then that is an indicator to buy the stock and vice versa if you want to go ahead and sell the stock. You can also take a look at the, I guess the, the histograms, if it's green, then that's just an indicator to you know go ahead and actually purchase the stock. If it, if it's red, then that's a signal that you should perhaps sell it. Um, and so if there is actually no heights or the heights are very small, perhaps that is an entry point to get in before the trend starts and that's why this tool is very very popular so yep that pretty much covers it uh, this is the entire notebook for generating signals and finding signals for your financial education so i hope you enjoyed this video and i hope to see you in my next one